Welcome to another edition of Conversations with CASA. My guest today is Chad Frymeyer. Chad is the uh, program director at Dallas County CASA. Um, Chad, you have another title that I'd like to share with people, but I would mess it up, so I'm going to pitch that one to you. Okay, so I'm also the board chair for the North Texas Coalition Against Human Trafficking up there in the Dallas area. Super, and that's our topic today. We're going to be talking about child sexual exploitation. So Chad, can you tell us about um, your work in this arena? Yeah, absolutely. Um, first of all, it's something I'm very passionate um, about, and I'll, we'll get to that a little bit later. Um, but it's, it's, it's something that is uh, really affecting our kids uh, here in Texas, uh, United States, and especially our CASA kids. And so child sex trafficking is basically when someone knowingly, excuse me, knowingly through force, fraud, or coercion uh, compels a child to do a sex act um, really for the benefit of the trafficker. And these traffickers, um, let me tell you, they're not very good people and they're, uh, they're very cunning, and they look for the most vulnerable, which is our, ca our CASA kids, as you know. Exactly. And so they go to our shelters. They, st they, they actually recruit and try to find kids out of our shelters, um, out of psych hospitals, foster homes. And what they do is they really prey on these kids' vulnerabilities. Um, a lot of our runaway kids um, get involved with, with this horrendous crime. Um, and basically, they, they offer love, attention, mm -hmm. uh, material items, clothes, uh, jewelry, anything to really, um, you know, prey on that, uh, you know, self-esteem issues that That's our right. kids have. And that need to belong. That need of belonging. And so uh, these kids fall into this trap and they end up getting brainwashed and they feel that, that uh, these men mostly, but it can be women as well, they feel like they, they, they finally found a connection and somebody that they can trust. You know, it's this is my boyfriend or this is my girlfriend. I'm getting all this love and attention and I've got a roof over my head. And uh, slowly but surely, those traffickers start, start uh, you know, really using that uh, manipulation technique. And they, they start uh, basically making these kids <laughs> perform sex acts over and over again, day after day, uh, weeks after weeks, mm -hmm. to, uh, to pad their pocketbooks with money. And it's, it's really sick and it's a disgusting crime. And it's something that uh, I know that we here at CASA take seriously and it's also something that the state of Texas takes seriously. Yeah, which is important because I, I think for so long, because this has been going on for a while, but it hasn't been on the radar like it is now. Um, if you're a CASA volunteer and you're working with a young person, how can you tell? What are you looking for? Um, so if you're a CASA volunteer, one of the, one of the main things that um, you really need to be um, focusing on is if your child starts running away. These traffickers find runaways so fast. Um, some studies show two to four hours a kid's on runaway. A trafficker has already came and uh, mm. you know started trying to hit on them or engage them. And so once that kid goes on runaway, you know, most of our kids, they, they don't have money, they don't have IDs, they don't have a, now a roof over their head. So what's the one thing that they have to offer? Mm -hmm. And fortunately, that's a lot of times that's their body. And so um, these kids, uh, if they come back into care, um, you need to look for, you know, some of the really basic signs are, you know, depression. Uh, fancy clothes, they're talking with street lingo uh, that you've never heard them talking about. Um, depression, um, all of these type of things, uh, you know, about boyfriends, talking about sexual things that kids uh, really their age shouldn't know about. So all of these things are, um, are telltale signs that the kid might be trafficked. Super, thank you. Um, I think cutting um, is something else that you might start looking for, especially in girls. Um, Bruising as well, mm -hmm. you know, the, these kids, uh, like I said, it starts out a, a very nice courtship and it ends a lot of times very violent. And so you have a lot of mental health issues. And, you know, you hear about the Stockholm, Stockholm Syndrome mm -hmm. and these trauma bonds. These are all things that are very real when it comes to our children. Um, and, you know, sadly, a lot of times the alternative is coming back into care and going to an RTC or bouncing around from home to home. 
So sometimes these kids see the, you know, the, the alternative of being trafficked and, and being with their, you know, with their crew or whatever, a better alternative to foster care. Exactly. Which yeah. is frightening, actually. Yes. Um, so part of the reason we're having this discussion with you today is because of a new resource that you were instrumental in helping develop. Would you mm -hmm. talk about that, please? Sure. Uh, and maybe I could put a little context behind it. Um, so a couple... A um, couple legislative sessions ago, um, Governor Abbott uh, gave appropriations to, to basically start a child sex trafficking team, um, which has been doing wonderful and amazing work. And really the idea was to pump resources into creating multidisciplinary teams, basically a regional response to this problem. Okay. And so um, all across the Texas right now, these MDTs, multidisciplinary teams, are starting to pop up. And it's, it's really um, a response to um, what's going on with these children and how can we come together as a community uh, to better serve them and give them wraparound services. And one of the main um, areas that these, this funding is going to is advocacy agencies. So that's where okay. CASA fits in. And so... Um, Dallas CASA was uh, really the pilot uh, for some gov uh, governor's office funding to create a CASA-centric child sexual exploitation training or curriculum. And so, as you know, that has been completed. Um, we actually partnered with a, um, an organization called Saving Innocence out of Los Angeles, and they're one of the premier organizations in advocacy, um, really nationwide. And so what we did is we took their curriculum and we basically mixed uh, cost and knowledge and what we did and came up with this, you know, this new idea. And it's really the first in the nation of its kind. So it's starting right here in Texas. We're super excited about it. And so this, this curriculum, um, it's, uh, it's very versatile. It's got an uh, online component. It's got an optional in-person component. It comes with, I brought a couple examples. It comes with um, a companion guide here um, so the the uh, volunteer can go through the the online training and, and with this companion guide also we have a facilitator guide so if you decide to do some in-person training you can use that facilitator guide and basically it goes from everything from prevention to restoration um, to how you know how to um, identify things uh, with these youth uh, it's about a 10-hour course um, and it's going to be free, offered on the Texas Casa College, so that's super exciting. Um, and it, it, honestly, it took two and a half years to put together, so it's quite the labor of love. Mm -hmm. um, but really, the, the, the project um, came out better than expected. I'm super proud of it, and I'm glad to be able to share it with you know, our Texas Casa Network. Yeah, well, we're excited, too, because it's just looking at the preview. I've not seen the whole thing yet, but the preview is very exciting. I mean, just the content is amazing. Yep. So kudos. Um, so you mentioned you're very passionate about this issue, um, and you said you wanted to come back to that. Sure. I just wanted to give you a chance to talk about that, too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so when I mean that uh, I, I have a personal connection to this, um, my sister was actually trafficked. And um, through that experience, this was before I knew about the telltale signs and before I was trained and I understood all the small nuances of what trafficking really is and the manipulation and mind games. And throughout that process, um, her child was taken away, tur turned into a CPS case actually. Mm -hmm. um, ended up my first child was adopted out of the system because of what happened to, with her in trafficking. And eventually she ended up passing away due to the life that she was leading. And so um, years later, after that you know, horrible experience happened, um, I started understanding and getting involved in trafficking and all of a sudden a light bulb switched. And I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> my sister was trafficked. If I would have seen the signs and the, you know, the, the, um, if I would have, you know, stepped in and, and been more trained and understood how to deal with her as opposed to, you know, judging and resentment and anger and how could you do this and what kind of person have you become, if I could have flipped that and really understood what was happening, I really think I could have saved her life. And so that's really what drives me 
to try to help these kids is really to do that, you know, in my sister's name gotcha. and, you know, to, to help others, boys and girls not, you know, come to the same fate as her. And so that's why I'm so passionate about it. Super. I, I'm sorry that that's what led you to your passion. Um, and I'm thankful that you have turned that, as they would say, that tragedy into a testimony and to um, a, a motivator to do greater works for others. So thank you for Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Um, you know, and I think the core here is the fact, because you talked about it, it, these kids are manipulated, young people, even older women, I've seen it, and men too, are manipulated into this lifestyle. And so many times people come at it with judgment and come at it with anger mm. and resentment. And how can you make this choice when they don't realize that the manipulators are like supreme in their art form? They are. Um, I mean, there's, it, it, it's pretty disgusting, but mm -hmm. I mean, there's online tutorials on how to be a pimp. There's books on how to be a pimp. If you go, you know, if you go looking, you're going to get very specific guidelines wow. of how to become a successful exploiter. And it's pretty sad. And now with, you know, <laughs> now with the online world, mm -hmm. things have come off the street and have entered into that little phone. And that's how a lot of kids are getting exploited through games, social media, things like that. It's a good thing. Another thing that they touch on a lot in this um, this training is, is on the all the uh, online components. Mm -hmm. Nick Mick, which is National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, they have some wonderful tools that I would suggest for anybody who's got children, who cares about children, or costs to go on there. Um, and really look because they've got a really nice um, they've got a really nice training about um, you know online technology and, okay. and things to look for. Um, so that's that's just another you know other resource that that CASAs can use to to fight the technology piece. So why is child sexual exploitation important to us in the CASA arena? So why it's so important is because literally these are our kids. If you look at the National Center uh, for Missing and Exploited Children's uh, website, they predict that about 70% of kids who are recovered from child sex trafficking have been in the child welfare system, which is, wow. that's a huge number, right? Yeah. And I've got a couple other interesting things that I, uh, other statistics I just wanted to tell you um, from the center's um, uh resource database. In 2018, eight, they got 18.4 million calls in 2018 on reports of sexual abuse images of children, online enticement, and child sexual exploitation. 18.4 million calls in one year. 80% um, of the kids that they recovered had been priorly sexually abused. So when we're looking at our kids, that when you get that sexual abuse case, mm -hmm. you really got to watch that child and, and learn and be trained on prevention and make sure that that's not going to happen to them because that's a very high, high number. Um, also, out of those, those kids recovered, 50% of them were under the age of 14. So we're talking wow. about very young children right. um, getting involved. And I just wanted to mention one other thing. Besides how important it is to get trained in this, you've got to, as far as costs are concerned, you've got to know your local community resources. And one of the best ways to do that is find one of your anti-trafficking coalitions in your area. What's awesome is there's 34 of them here in, in Texas. Texas. Really? Yes. We've got a list here all the way from Amarillo to McAllen. And so maybe we could make that available through Texas CASA because you really need to start networking with these people. It's a great place to make referrals. It's a get great place to just see um, really the landscape of the anti-trafficking um, you know, efforts in mm -hmm. your area. Mm -hmm. So connecting with them is very important. So um, give me the name of the resource again, and then you talked about it's a great place to make referrals. What kind of referrals would somebody be making? So, for instance, you know, in, in the uh, North Texas Coalition Against Human Trafficking, we have everybody from DFPS to FBI to Homeland Security um, to, you know, other advocacy agencies to housing, school. So whenever we have an issue, we get together once a month 
And if I need somebody to look up, you know, something, you know, if I need the FBI for some reason to, to look into something, then I've got that personal connection. Okay. And we, you know, um, if, if I need a school gotcha. resource, I can make a referral for a child. You know, if DFPS is sitting in the room, I can say, hey, listen, I've been trying to get this child, you know, uh, you know, resources are involved in the MDT. I, I really need you to talk to your caseworker about doing this. So there's all sorts of different people in the room that are all focused on trafficking. And when you got an issue, they're right there. You've got, you know how important it is to build personal exactly. relationships when you want something done. And this is, and really this co the coalition is really how I got involved from the point that I am, that I was until the point that I am now because of, of my involvement in that. Interesting. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Are there, is there anything else that you would want a CASA volunteer to know? Um, I think that two or three, three, three things, um, get trained, super important. Um, also got to have patience with these kids and know that if your kid runs, these, these kids run and they run and they run, do not get discouraged. That is literally a part of the pattern. Um, a lot of, uh, statistics say that between a child will run seven to nine times before actually coming in and being mentally and physically ready to get out of the life. So don't get, don't get discouraged, have patience. Go out, get training, know those community resources, and just start building your knowledge around this subject because it's very complex. Super. Thank you. Yep. And again, thank you for joining us. And thank you for joining us for another edition of Conversations with CASA.